Welcome one and all to another edition of the Defo Show with Luby right here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. It is tourney time, so figured no better guy to talk to than a man who is coaching a team in the tournament. The Miami Hurricanes men's hoops team tips off their tourney dreams this Friday at 310 in the Midwest region. They take on West Coast USC. We talk with Coach Jim Laranega about his UM basketball team and more today on the Diva Show with Luby, Five Reasons Sports Network coach Jim Laranega talks tourney. University of Miami basketball, a uh, first class operation, and especially uh, once this man was at the controls, and we need to congratulate him because he's. Luby's going to be here even longer. Yes, but we sir. have this uh, basketball treasure chest right here in our midst here in the uh, uh, South Florida area. We welcome to the show uh, the and heading for the NCAA tournament, the head coach of the University of Miami basketball team, the great Jim Laranega, joins us here on the Defo Show. Uh, coach, how are you? Good to have you on the program. Yeah, I'm good, Defo. I'm excited. Uh, Friday we'll be uh, tossing it up around 3.10 Friday afternoon nice. against Southern Cal. Uh, in the NCAA tournament, and March Madness has officially begun. You've had to really dust off the dancing shoes a couple of times uh, in the last week. I mean, uh, it's always great to be with your team, and uh, it's such a heartening celebration when you see the team celebrate when their uh, selection is announced into the NCAA tournament, as uh, the University of Miami was uh, for that ball game that you mentioned. And then uh, contract extension. I, I don't know. I mean... Are, are, are the legs a little tired? I mean, you had to be doing a lot of dancing, uh, Coach Larry. <laughs> yeah, a couple of good weeks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great stuff. Uh, all right. I mean, uh, again, I, I, we say this, and uh, I know you, you're too humble to, uh, you know, probably go along with this uh, notion, but you own Coach K. I mean, yep. uh, Duke. Uh, you, you had, uh, what, a 500 record against them uh, in uh, ACC play, and uh, – and then you give them all they can handle. Now, that, that was a beautiful thing in the ACC tournament. And, and especially, I mean, is there anything better than, than uh, like a, a, a full court pass for a, a game winning layup yes. at the buzzer in the previous game? That, that had to be a pretty good ride uh, that you had in the tournament, Coach. Uh, tell us about the experience. Well, in the in the previous game, before we played Duke, we played Boston College, who had won in overtime the night before. And the game went into overtime, and we were in a battle. They, they were playing really hard and really well, and our guys were playing well, and uh, the game was going back and forth. And finally, uh, they had the ball with, with uh, just uh, under 20 seconds to play, and they ran a play and shot the ball with five seconds to go. Jordan Miller defended the shooter very well. The shot missed. Sam Warnberg got the rebound outletted it to Charlie Moore. And after Jordan Miller contested the shot, he took off and Charlie Moore hit him in, in stride for a, a layup at the buzzer for the win. So it was a great win. It moved us into the semifinals. And we have battled Duke evenly. It was uh, Our record was 7-7 seven and seven over the last uh, 10 years. And, and unfortunately... Uh, they got the best of us. We we had a chance. The score was, was uh, I think we were down two with the ball with just under a minute to play, and uh, we ended up not being able to convert. And they made some free throws. So, uh, But we're excited now. The next uh, stage of the college basketball season, it actually begins today. NCAA yep. basketball starts today. Yeah, I have the uh, couple of playing games and then a couple more tomorrow, and then all the excitement begins. Uh, now, uh, did you uh, break out old uh, Bill Russell tapes on that uh, full court outlet uh, that uh, ended up uh, beating Boston College? Uh, was it Dave Cowens, uh, Walton? I mean, uh, where did they get this idea? To, or is that just, you know, in, in kids' heads today to make a perfect pass like that? And that's a thing of beauty when it happens. I mean, it couldn't have been any better. I mean, one of the great plays I've seen. I'm surprised that wasn't number one on uh, top ten Sports Center plays that night. Well, here's the thing: after the game was over, we were being interviewed, and they asked Charlie more about it. Now, to me, it was just an instinctive play, but Charlie reminded me and the the media 
that we do that every day. It's called the Celtic drill. It's a fast yeah. break drill. Sam Wardenberg gets the rebound, outlets it to Charlie, who throws it to Jordan, who makes the layup. And it continues where other guys are doing the same thing. So it, it, it is something we practice all the time, uh, but you don't normally see it uh, to end the game and, and the layup be at the buzzer. Well, it was a, a tremendous play by all three players. It's the kind of thing you fantasize about uh, when you're uh, you know, playing full court yes, by yes. yourself in the park, you know, because uh, you just want to go out and shoot some baskets. And, uh, you know, you, you imagine a situation that it would be a buzzer beater to win a tournament game. Uh, it, it does appear, Coach Larinaga, uh, like your team is A, very close. I, I know it could be cliche to say this, but, but also they, they look like they're having a blast out there, which is great to see. Well, I think the team chemistry has been tremendous all year long. And I think a lot has to do with our returning players embracing the new guys. Now, Sam Wardenberg, uh, Rodney Miller, Dan Gack, uh, Cam Augusti, and Isaiah Wong all returned from last year. And then we have Charlie Moore, Jordan Miller, and our three freshmen, uh, Bensley Joseph, Wooga Poplar, and Ja'Kai Robinson. And blending their skills together has been the, the responsibility of my coaching staff. But the beauty of it is the veteran players just embrace the young and new guys, and they've made themselves a, a very formidable team. Uh, what I am disappointed in is the, the lack of respect that the ACC is getting. I... Uh, Notre Dame, who finished second in the ACC, is in one of the first four games today. Yep. What you refer yes. to as the play-in game. Yep. That is crazy. A team like Notre Dame. Notre Dame, we're not, we're not talking about a mid-major, low-major <laughs> team. We're talking about one of the premier athletic programs in the country. They're in the play-in game, and they finished second in the ACC regular season. So this is this is unheard of. It's it's disrespectful. Oh, and I hope our league will will earn some respect during these next few weeks. Talking about earning respect, we're talking with Coach Jim Larinaga, the Canes back in the tournament. So congratulations, Coach! Congratulations on your extension. The Canes take the court three ten p.m. this Friday. They're in the Midwest region. Take on U.S. See, I want to ask you because there's been a lot of buzz around you. I mean, you've talked about this for a few years, especially with your program. They were close. They were close. There's a lot of injuries. You're healthy this year, and we've seen what you guys can do. But now with Coach Cristobal back, a lot of the times it seems like the coaches at a program sort of come together because they realize one sport can help another. How does it feel to not only have your program being a success, but to see the South Florida kid come home and have Coach Cristobal back in at uh, Coral Gables? Oh, Mario's going to do a fantastic job. The reception that he got, our fans, our season ticket holders, all of our boosters, they are thrilled about the direction our football program is already heading in. Uh, the recruiting has gone well. Their spring training has gone well. So, uh, you know, Mario and his staff uh, are going to bring a lot of excitement to uh, South Florida, to the Miami Coral Gables area. And that certainly helps our basketball program. And it, it helps all of our athletic programs because uh, people follow uh, the U. Everybody knows the, the U football program is legendary with five national championships to their credit. So we're going to be back battling for a national championship again before too long. The great Jim Larinaga is going to start his uh, quest for a national championship uh, coming up on Friday, uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3, 310, right? Yes, uh, 310. The 310 to Yuma. And uh, that's against USC. Uh, an interesting story. I mean, what what do we know of USC? I, I would have to say, Coach, uh, I know I I don't know that I saw enough USC basketball to to have a great feel for uh, what they do. Uh, we know uh, Enfield what was at Florida Gulf Coast made a uh, George Mason like run, didn't quite get to the Final Four, but uh, certainly came into prominence. He has a great story and background behind him. Uh, what, what, what does uh, USC look like to you as you've uh, gone through the film and, and you know, trying to get yourself uh, ready for this game? 
Well, as you mentioned, Andy Enfield did a great job at Florida Gulf Coast. He's doing a great job at Southern Cal. They are the fourth tallest team in the country. Their, their two guard, Drew Peterson, is 6'9". Six, 6'9", nine. Six, nine right. as Oof. a two guard. They are, they, they are gigantic. Jesus. Holy Their Magic Johnson. I was going to say gun. Magic. <laughs> yeah. 6'3", six, 6'9", six, 6'9", six, 6'10". Six, nine, six, nine, six, They're gigantic. They're the fourth tallest team in the country. He runs like a pro-style offense. Uh, their big kid, Mobley, is, is, his younger brother is now at the Cleveland Cavaliers and probably going to be rookie of yes. the year. Yep. yep. So, you know, they, they're a very talented team. Uh, Boogie Ellis, uh, who is their point guard, shooting guard, uh, transfer from Memphis, uh, came back home. He's actually from California. And uh, they, they uh, like the Florida Gulf Coast team. They like to run and shoot it and, and uh, very, very talented, very, very big. Uh, they block a lot of shots. They're the number one uh, team in the Pac-12 in rebounding at both ends of the court. And that's not a that's not a strong area for us. Uh, we're not a great defensive rebounding team, and they're the number one offensive rebounding team. So we're going to have our hands full on the backboards. Yeah, get uh, some elbow swinging or something in there uh, you know, to try and uh, create some kind of equalizer or some of the old New York uh, recreational park tactics. Uh, uh, what do you have to do to beat them then? Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, box out. I, I mean, what will the message be before the game? as uh, you send your uh, team out there on the court? Actually, I, I, I don't want them getting shots. <laughs> I don't want it to be a rebound battle. Yeah. We want to put enough pressure on them to force mistakes, to force turnovers. We want to get some steals and get into the open court. Our goal will be that to, to force at least 15 to 20 uh, turnovers. If we get 15 to 20 turnovers, that means 15 to 20 less shots. For them, and that's what it'll take to beat uh, the Southern Cal Trojans. We can't allow it to be a battle on the board. And uh, from an offensive standpoint, the same way, we have to make shots. We can't allow them to, to just dominate the glass because we're missing. We're not going to get enough offensive rebounds to win, so we got to make the first shot count. One of my favorite uh, sports movies, uh, Cinderella Man, a uh, great story. And uh, I'm a huge fan, uh, Coach Larinaga, of all Cinderella stories. And I don't know that there's a greater source of them than the NCAA uh, basketball tournament. And uh, you were one of those Cinderellas. So uh, what was it like to uh, wear the glass slipper in 2006? You know, one of the things we've shared with our players this year, and this is very, very true, Every team that makes the NCAA tournament is good. You only do it one of two ways. You either go on a roll and win your conference tournament like Virginia Tech did as a seven seed, and you go into the NCAA tournament feeling great about yourselves, or you had a great resume and got invited to the dance because you've had a great overall season like the Miami Hurricanes have done. Once you get in there, it then becomes how well do you play? Our George Mason team that made the run to the Final Four won the regular season but lost in the tournament. <laughs> when we lost in the conference tournament, I, I asked the players, I said, hey, we, we lose in the tournament. Does that mean we're a bad team and don't deserve to be in? And they were like, no, we, we had a bad shooting night. So we got to bounce back and play our best basketball. We then faced in the first round a team that had been to the Final Four the year before, Michigan State. And we played a great game and, and beat them 75-65. The next game, we had to def play the defending national champions, the North Carolina Tar Heels, yep. and we beat them. So what I'm saying is when you get into the tournament, you know everybody is good. You just have to play really, really well the night you play. And, and not every team does that. A few years ago, uh, the University of Virginia lost. They were the number one seed, and they lost to UMBC, a school that nobody ever heard of. It was a one seed <laughs> versus a 16 yep, seed. Yeah. 
And the first time the 16th seed won because they were good that day. Now they lost the next day, but they were great that day. The following year, Virginia won the national championship because they played great every game. So you have to play really well. When, when, when that ball is tipped off, 310, on Friday, and the Miami Hurricanes are facing the Southern Cal Trojans, we have to play a great game that day. And if we win, we're going to have to play a great game two days later on Sunday. And you have to play that well every night if you want to advance. Survive in advance, lose and go home. Coach, have you or will you use that George Mason run to motivate these guys? Because the Canes are sort of an unsung team. They've been You've been good all year, and you've been talking about this club for three years with us. You've been waiting for the injuries to subside. They did, and you guys were consistent all year long, going toe-to-toe with as good as anyone in the country, yet you're sort of forgotten. Have you or will you use that run by George Mason to, to motivate these guys? No, no, we, we don't talk about George Mason. We talk about our Miami program and the things we've done. We've talked about the Shane Larkin team that won the ACC. We talk about the Angel Rodriguez team, the Bruce Brown team. And we talk about, you know, how little difference there is. And most of the time it comes down to either getting a defensive stop or making a shot. When we played Loyola Chicago uh, a few years back in 2018, uh, we we were up to shooting a free throw with with uh, like seven seconds to go. We missed the free throw, and um, uh, Loyola Chicago got the rebound, raced down the floor, and shot a three. The shot went in, and they beat us. Oh, they went on to the final four that year. That's the kind of luck you have to have, and you have to be lucky, but you also have to be really, really good. All right, one final thing, Coach. We appreciate your time. As always, it's always a pleasure talking about anything with you, especially uh, at uh, this time of the year where everybody's so excited about college basketball, even in this town, which is not necessarily uh, one that, uh, you know, has been overwhelmingly interested in the game. But but you certainly have put them, uh, you know, in people's hearts and minds. And, you know, we we applaud you for that. Uh, You know, getting back to the Cinderella thing, and, you know, we have to go a little old school here, but uh, I, I always like the Cinderella player that evolves. In the tournament, it seems like, uh, you know, maybe it's not every year, but uh, there have been many great ones. I remember Cassie Russell had a great tournament one year. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, we were so happy he became a New York Nick. And uh, but we, we saw this uh, with many other players, including another New York Nick that I I, I would imagine you're very familiar with, uh, who was with Marquette and helped him make a big run. And it was kind of an improbable uh, guy to uh, steal the show. But uh, Dean, the dream Memminger. Uh, your, your, uh, your recollections of Dean, the dream manager, who, who never fulfilled tremendous promise as a pro, but uh, nonetheless, as a college player, uh, man, I mean, you thought you were watching pure genius uh, when he was in the tournament. Well, Dean Memminger and I are, are the same year in school. And we there you go. Each other a, number <laughs> of, a number of times in high school. Dean Dean Memminger and Charlie Elverton were the backcourt for Rice High School in New York City when my teammates and I were playing against Rice at Archbishop Malloy. And the one very sad memory I have of Dean Memminger is his Rice High School team beat my Archbishop Malloy team uh, in the city, New York City, CHSAA semifinals in 1967. My team Whoa. was undefeated, 23, 23 oh, and 0. No. 23 and 0, oh, and we God. lost to Rice. And it's the only game in my career that I got thrown out. <laughs> I got, what? I got, I got thrown out for punching Charlie Helmeton with about oh, 45, <laughs> 50 <laughs> seconds to go. You went to Juan Howard on the a little bit of a scuff, We got got into a little bit of a scuffle, scuffle, scuffle and uh, I punched him in the face, and and uh, the ref threw me out of the game. So, wow! In a Catholic anyway, high school game, that's, coach. My Man, that's competitive. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. All right. Well, we, we, we love you, Coach. coach. And best. Uh, best of luck. I mean, we want to see go those uh, Trojans uh, go back inside the horse and uh, gallop <laughs> all the way back to L.A. with a loss. 
And uh, we'd love to see a great run by the University of Miami. Congratulations on everything, uh, making the tournament a uh, great, great season. And, of course, the contract extension. So uh, we're so happy that you're going to be around for uh, at least a while longer. I think that was into 2035, Coach. So we're very, uh, very happy to uh, see that happen. Great move by the athletic department. And uh, thanks so much for being with us. It's always a pleasure. Always a blast talking to you. My, my pleasure, fellas. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thanks okay. so much. Thank you so much to Coach Jim Larinaga. The Miami Hurricanes back in the NCAA tournament looking to make a deep run. Healthy. We've had a lot of close calls this season, but had a really strong season. The ACC had a good ACC tournament and find themselves in the Midwest region Friday, 310. They take on USC. We talked with Coach German Larinaga about this season, about this tournament, about his past with George Mason, and of course, a little bit about of Coach Mario Cristobal coming back to the Miami Hurricanes. Yes, he is a basketball he is a basketball coach, but the excitement around Coach Cristobal being back is something that all Canes fans and all the sports world has sort of felt. I don't know if the U is back or anything like that, but Coach Cristobal came back, left a thriving Oregon program to come back to UM, has set up a really strong coaching staff, and has really got not only excitement just from afar, but ticket sales are up by like 10, 20, 100. I don't even know. The percentage of ticket sales are up is insane for UM football. And like Coach Larinaga talked about, it has got the excitement all around campus. They're looking for Kings football to get back to prominence. And, of course, he's looking for a deep run in the NCAA tournament. So really appreciate all of Coach Larinaga's time. Hopefully we can talk to him again soon. And hopefully the Canes can knock off USC and make a deep run into the NCAA tournament. Appreciate you listening today. Don't forget to check us out tomorrow morning, 7 to 9, live. We are on IN Channel. Just Google The Defo Show, D-E-F-O. And today, check us out, talking about South Florida. We had maybe the longest or one of the longest tenured Sports writers in all of South Florida. Dave Hyde is our guest today on the Believe Network. After hours, just go to Believe.com, search after hours. Check out our conversation with Dave Hyde. We talked about the Miami Dolphins, very active early free agency. Hopefully, they target more offensive linemen in free agency. The Miami Heat still thriving in the Eastern Conference. And a little bit of the Miami Marlins. And the rest of the NFL, Brady back. Aaron Rodgers gets his deal. Russell Wilson, we talked about all of it. With the one and only Dave Hyde today. So check that out. Believe.com. Search after hours. And check out more of us. As we're here most days. The Devo Show with Luby. Again, thank you to Coach Jim Larinaga. Right here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation location because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. Their hours have changed a little bit. Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 10. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11.30 to 10. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Hey, folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapist, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion, unmatched, and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this. If you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled, caring people, there is truly only one place. And that one place is Catholic Health Services.